Alright guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to learn how we can upload images from React to Node.js. So let me give you a quick preview of what we are going to build. So we got in here our front end from React, we got a button that we can choose the file that we want to upload and a button to upload the image. Let me just increase the size of this, choose the file. I'm going to choose, for example, this one from image. And now I'm going to click in here on upload the image. And as you can see, we've got a nice progress bar and we got a message saying that the image that was uploaded and we got a preview of our image. This image is being stored in our backend and then we can just reuse it anywhere that we want in our front end. Uh, if for some reason we upload a file that is not an image or the file of the image is too big, we can have, let me just refresh, we can have like some sort of a message saying file too large. All right, so let's get started with this. So in here in my project, the first thing that I did was I created a new React project. So I just did the, the regular command npx create React app. I call this one client. Uh, so this is where we're going to write all our code. So let's start doing some stuff in here. Let's go into our app.js. This is where we're going to write all our code. I'm going to delete all of this stuff in here. So what do we want to start doing? First of all, we want to have our form. Okay, so let's start creating a form. By the way, I'm just going to increase one size in here to make sure that everyone can see this better. Um, so inside of this div, I'm going to create a form just like this. And whenever we submit this form, I'm going to put in here on submit. On submit, I'm going to call a function called submit form. Okay. And inside of this, of this form, I want to have an input. So I'm going to put in here an input with the type of file. And I don't think I need anything else in here. So I just need this kind of input and I need also the button. So I'm going to put in here a button with a class name of submit, submit button. And I'm going to put in here upload image. I think that's the correct one. Yeah. I'm going to put upload image. Uh, obviously, when we do, let me just put in here a break tag so we can see a difference between these two. So obviously in here in our form, when we submit this form, we want to run this function from React. We, we don't have this function at the moment. So let's just create it. Const submit form equals to an arrow function. And I'm just going to create in here on the top const state set state. So what I'm doing in here at the moment is I'm going to create a state where we will be able to actually store the values from our input file and then send it on to the back end. Okay. So in order to use our state using react hooks, I'm going to use the use state react hook. Um, and this will be an object. This state could be anything that we want, but I'm going to put it in here as a file. So this is where we're going to store the file that we're going to use in here. Uh, I'm going to have the user image. So this is so we can see the preview of the image that we're going to have in here. And uh, the next thing I want is a message. So basically, whenever you upload an image, there's, there might be something wrong or it might be a success. So we want to have a a message that will be in here as well. Uh, and we want a uh, success. By default, I'm going to put false, like it's not working. Let's just import in here on the top the use state. So I'm going to do import use state from React. Okay. Um, and so far, I think we are good. Uh, I'm going to put just some, some styling on this button. We gave it a class of submit btn. So let's go into our app.css. I'm going to delete most of this stuff that is in here. I'm just going to leave this one on the top. 
and I'm gonna put this one, my submit button, and I'm just gonna add some stylings that I have in here on the side for this button. So these are the stylings, background color, some color for the text, some padding, border, border radius, margin top. Okay, let's start this project. So I'm gonna do a NPM start. Oops, I need to do a CD inside of the client. Make sure that you are inside of your React project. And let's do NPM start, okay? Once we do that, we should be able to come in here and see the project now. There's not too much in here at the moment because we are just getting started. There it is, okay. Choose file, upload image. That's the only things that we have right now. Okay, so this input that we have in here with a type of file, whenever you go in here and select an image, okay, we can have a on change event in here. And basically a on change event means that whenever you are uploading or selecting an image, you want to run a certain function. So let's see, we can call it what did I call this one? I call this a handle form or handle, handle input. You could call it anything. I'm going to call this one handle input. So let's create this function in here. So const handle input is going to be equals to an arrow function. And what I want to do in here on my handle input. So first of all, I'm going to do a let reader equals to a new file reader. So basically, this is a constructor that you can use on browsers that allows you to read files. Okay, so we're going to initialize, initialize this and store it in this variable called reader. So we can read the file, of course. And we're going to do in here a let file. So this is how we can actually grab the file from the input. So we're going to do e.target.files0. OK, the e comes from the event. So whenever you are interacting with uh, this kind of inputs, you have an event. You can call it anything that you want. I'm just going to call it e. Uh, and then the target is obviously our, our input. And then we have access to the files that we are trying to upload. Uh, there could be multiple files. That's why we have in here an array with a zero because we just want the first one that we are uploading in there. Okay, so now that we got this, the next thing that I wanna do is a reader dot on load and as you can see, that is even giving me like this autocomplete. So this is a function. Now, what's this reader.onload end? Basically, like I said, we initialize this file reader from our browser. So it means that whenever you are uploading some sort of a file or anything, whenever the browser finishes to load it, we can do something with it. So what we want to do is, remember our state that we got in here on the top called state. Whenever we want to update our state, we need to run this function called set state. So we're gonna do set state so we want to update the state and what i want to put in there first of all is always a good practice to do a spread operator just to make sure that we can grab everything that was in our state and then we can overwrite any of these values so the value that i want to first of all overwrite is going to be this one file so this is this name and the value that i want to put inside of it is going to be this one look file and this file is from our event target files zero, okay? So this is this file. The next thing I wanna do is a user image. This is so we can actually see a preview on our browser. And this is from reader.result. So we got our reader in here on the top. Like I said, when you are uploading some uh, images like we did, you can have access to this reader.result, which will give you the path to the image, not the file itself, but the path. That's what we want to display the image on the page, of course. Next thing that we want to do in here is just, just reset the, the message, message to be um, empty, just to be empty for now. Okay, finally, before we finish this reader on load ended, we need to make sure that we do reader, 
dot read as data URL file. Okay, this is the last thing that we need to do reader dot read as data URL so we can actually handle our file in here. Okay, now we should be all good to see these on the page. So obviously we will not see these on the page yet because we didn't put anything there. So I want to have just under our form, I want to have a div with a class of image container. So this is so I can actually center this image preview on my browser. So I got this and then I want to have my image. Okay, so I want to have my image with the source, which is going to come from the state dot user image. And for the alt text, I can just put, for example, preview. Okay, so if I refresh the page, here is the problem. We still didn't do anything and we can see this kind of preview in here, which is not great. We don't want to see this if there is no preview at all. So for that, I'm going to wrap this div in here with a conditional statement. So I'm going to say in here that um, maybe just inside of this, I'm going to put in here if my state dot user image is true. So is true, it means that there is some sort of text in here. Okay, at the moment it's completely empty. So this is going to be considered as false. But once you have some data in there, it's going to be considered as true. So if this is true, and this one, okay, so that's just like a quick way for us to actually display this image only when you actually selected some file. Okay, so we got these. Let's just do some, um, I'm going to just copy these. Um, let me just put this image container like this. And I'm going to go to my apps.css. I'm going to tell you why I'm, I'm just like putting some styles in here, just to make sure that uh, um, we can see because you could put images from different sizes and so on. We just want to make sure that we can see these well on the page. So image container max of, I'm going to put maybe, maybe 350, I don't know, margin zero auto, margin top 50 pixels, just so we can see this. And then from our image container, the image inside of it, we want to have a width of 100%. Okay. Let's refresh the page. Let's give it a try. I'm going to put it in here. And as you can see, look, we can see a preview of the image. Perfect. Okay. Let me just refresh. One thing that I want to do is if I'm going to click in here on the upload image, if I didn't select any image at all, I want to display some message and I want to prevent this to submit to the backend. Okay. So this is going to be in here in our submit form. So let's go there. In our submit form, what I want to do is, first of all, I'm going to put in here uh, E, and then E dot prevent default. Okay, so by default, whenever you are submitting a form, it's going to submit to another page and something like that, and, and the page is going to completely reload. We just want to prevent that. So we can do that with the E prevent default. The next thing that I want to do is obviously, as I was mentioning before, I want to make sure that I have a file. Okay, so I'm going to do if, and then I'm going to do state dot file. So if I have some file already in here on my state, I can do whatever I want, maybe submit this onto the backend, else, okay. Else, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the state, set my state to be whatever was there from before. And then I'm going to put with a message of, uh, please select an image. Please select an image to upload. Okay, let's refresh. Let's click. Oh, I completely forgot. Of course. We still don't see this message in here because we never put it down here. So let's put the the, um, 
message here. So let's say if we have a state message and, and I'm gonna put this maybe like as a, I don't know, an H3, for example, and this is gonna be the state message, state message. Okay, let's refresh, I'm gonna click. Please select an image to upload, nothing. Okay, so if I'm gonna click in here, and then there it is. Okay, so we are all good in this part. Now, now that we got all of these in here, um, let's just go and uh, submit this onto the backend. We still don't have a backend, but we are gonna create it in a second. So, doo -doo -doo -doo, so what I want to do, let's submit this onto the backend. First of all, I actually need to install npm i Axios, okay? Make sure that you install this package, Axios, because we're gonna use this uh, package in order to communicate with the backend. So, now that we got these Axios, let's go on to the top and let's do import Axios from Axios. And now that we got this package, I actually want to go inside of my package.json on almost the last line, I'm gonna put a comma, I'm gonna put in here a proxy, okay? And in here, I wanna put, uh, let's see, I wanna put this, which is basically whenever I'm writing like some sort of a, um, a request to my backend, I don't have to be writing all the time this kind of code like HTTP, localhost, 5000, I want my my backend to be running on the port 5000. That's why I have in here this 5000. Uh, obviously, if you're gonna put a different port, just update it in here. Now, because I have this like this, I don't need to be writing down this all the time, okay, in here on the front end. Let's go to our submit form. Let's actually submit this onto our backend. So if we have a state file, means that we selected some file, we want to um, make some sort of a request to the backend. So let's do that. First of all, I'm gonna do let. Let's just create some space in here so we can actually see what's going on. Let form data. Okay, so I'm creating a new variable that will represent the form data that we want. And this is gonna be equals to a new form data. So this is another constructor available on the browsers as well that you can just like create and then start adding things onto this form data. Um, so the first thing that I wanna do is form data. Look, this is my variable that I just created. Uh, this is gonna be like an object, by the way. You can add things onto it. So I want to append onto it a file, okay? I want to append to this form a file and the file, where is it coming from? It's coming from my state.file. Remember that whenever you click on the choose button in here, you are updating the state, and now we can just pass it in here. Okay, so next thing that I want to do is I wanna do a axios.post. It's always a good practice to use a post method whenever you wanna send some data from the front end to the back end. And where do I wanna send these to? I wanna send this onto my backend to forward slash API. Remember, we just created this proxy with the HTTP localhost 5000. I don't have to write it down because I did that step. So I'm gonna put in here forward slash API, forward slash image upload. Okay, so this is the, the URL that I want to put and then is gonna be the actual data that we wanna send. So that is gonna be my form data. And finally, I need to put in here a final parameter as an object. So I'm gonna put in here the object and I'm gonna say in here that the content type is gonna be of the type multi-part form data. Okay, so this is just so the browser knows that the data that you are trying to send from your front end to the back end is going to be uh, as a multi-part form data. So you can send files actually. 
and that's it that's it that's it so um yeah okay i guess that we are all ready now to move on to our backend and we can actually start seeing things happening um so i think i think that's all right that's all right i think that's all right so let's go on to our backend okay on our folder uh on my terminal let me go one step back okay pwd make sure that you guys are in here on the global folder i'm gonna do a npm init dash y like i said guys make sure that you are not inside of the react project but just outside on the global folder so npm init dash y uh, we got our package.json i'm going to create a new file which is going to be my server.js so my main file is going to be server.js okay so i updated this in my package.json Right, so there's a couple of things we need to install in here. NP, um, npm install express, and I need to install Molter. So Molter is going to be the package that we're going to use in order to be able to install things. Let me just double check if I'm missing anything else. Uh, I think that uh, we want as well npm i node mon. Okay, so node mon is just so if we do any changes to our backend, we don't need to keep restarting the server so we can see the the changes. Okay, let's install this node mon. Okay, so in my package.json, I'm going to change the script that we got in here to uh, start, and this is going to be node mon and then server.js so this is just if you want to start your server you can just use this command npm start perfect let's go into our server.js let's get this started first thing i want to do const express equals to require express okay next thing i want to do is i want to import my molter so i'm going to do const molter equals to require molter perfect um i think i'm going to be using the file system later on so we can just import these as well const fs equals to require i'm not i'm not sure now if we're going to use it or not but i'm just going to import it anyway this file system you don't need to install it it just comes from uh, uh, node.js itself um, that's it. Okay, let's initialize our server. So let's do const app equals to express. So we can use our express server. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I can send data from the front end to the back end. So I'm going to do app.use and then express.json. This is so we can send some data from the front end to the back end as JSON format. Um, what else? What else do I need? I don't think I need anything else. For now, I'm just going to start creating my route. So I'm going to do app.post, app.post, and I'm going to go in here and put my forward slash API, forward slash image upload. Okay, so after this URL, this route that we have in here, I want to do upload and then dot single uh, so this is upload dot single means that we want to upload like a single um, file okay and this is going to be the name of your file that is coming from the front end so i'm going to put in here file let's see our front end if you guys remember look we did in here this is our front end when we are submitting our form we are saying that we appended to our form a parameter called file so this is important guys whatever the name you put in here this is the value of our file but this is the name that we are giving to it so whatever the name you have in here make sure that in your server.js when you are doing this upload dot single and then this name needs to match that one okay um i think that's it and then we got a regular request response okay um that's it that's it so obviously we don't have these upload these 
let's create it const upload uh, oops upload is going to be equals to our molter that we imported on the top so molter molter is going to be in here a function with an object inside and what we want to have inside of this we want to have a storage okay so let's define our storage so this means that whenever you are sending some data from the front end to the back end we're going to run this upload.single file we can catch the file we're going to run this this upload with the molten first thing we need to do is the storage where are we going to store this file so let's create our storage so const storage and this is going to be equals to molter dot disk storage so okay this is as an object so first thing i need to put in here is my destination where i'm going to send this file to so let's put in here um parentheses because this is a function which takes a request takes a file if you want to grab the file and then takes a function that we can call whatever usually people call it cb for callback function so we need to call this function callback and inside of this there is two parameters the first one is if it's going to be any error or anything so we can just put null we don't expect any error in here right now and then the second one is going to be where do we want to store the images that they are coming okay let me just close this this is our backend our front end is in here on the client all the rest this is our backend so I'm going to create a folder in here called images. You could call anything that you want, okay? So this is going to be images forward slash. So it means that whenever you're trying to upload an image from React to Node.js, we're going to store it in the backend in a folder called images. Look, that's exactly what I did in here. Now, for the storage, after the destination, let's put a comma. The next thing that we want to do is What's going to be the file name? How are you going to solve this? So this is going to take the same thing, request a file and a callback function. Okay, so in here, what you want to do is you want to call this function callback and we want to have a null for the first part. This is if you would have an error. And then for the second part, this is going to be the name of the file. Now, for the name of the file, what I'm going to do is some people, they can start uploading files like, for example, uh, JPEGs or, uh, or GIFs or whatever. I want to make sure that I'm going to store them all as JPEGs. OK, so from here, I can do a file dot. Uh, I need to put this one in here as like this because I'm using the backticks. OK, so I'm going to do file. Look, we can grab the file in here and do whatever we want with that. I want to do file.originalName. Uh, and then this file.originalName um, has, like, for example, the name of the file plus the extension. So we don't want our extension to be, like, all together. We want to separate the name from the extension. So I'm going to put in here file.originalName, and then I'm going to put dot .split. So I want to split these on a dot, okay? And I want to grab just the first part. That's what this uh, array in here zero means that if, for example, javascript.jpg, I want to grab just the name. That's why I'm doing the split. Okay, so this is what we got. And then I just want to put it in here, dot jpeg. Like I said, I'm just doing this because I want to make sure that if people put different sorts of extensions, GIFs, PNGs, or whatever, I want to save everything as a JPEG. Okay, so this part is all good for our storage. Now, let's go back in here to our upload. We fixed this first part, or we created this first part for the storage. The next thing that we want to do is going to be our limits. So we want to make sure that when anyone is uploading an image that is not too big, you want to set up a limit what people can upload. So for that, we're going to put in here a file size. And for this file size, I'm going to put one megabyte. OK, so this is going to be like in bytes. So we need to convert this. 
So you know that uh, one megabyte, then you got kilobytes, and then you got the bytes. So this is gonna be like six zeros. Okay, this is how you can put in here as a one megabyte. If you wanna put two megabytes, you're gonna put two, whatever you want, really. Uh, we got this. Next, we want to have a file filter. So the file filter that we want to have in here is gonna have a request, a file, and then a callback as usual. So what we want to do in here is we wanna check that if our file dot origin, oops, file dot original name dot match. So we wanna make sure that the name of the file, the file that you are sending, if it comes with for example, as a JPEG, or if it doesn't come, I'm going to put in here as a not. So I'm going to put this not, it means that I want to check if that file that people are trying to upload, if it's not, for example, a JPEG, or if it's not a PNG or whatever, I just want to say, look, I don't want this. You need to upload something that is a PNG, a GIF, or whatever. So that's why we're going to do this match in here. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to put on this match, I'm going to put a regular expression. So this regular expression is going to be like this. Let me just copy it and just paste it in here. Okay. So here is the regular expression. This match is to make sure that uh, the file original name must end on a dot, either JPEG or JPEG with a E or PNG, and this is case insensitive. That's why we got in here the I in the end. So if the file that you are trying to upload is not one of these, so is something else, maybe it's a PDF or whatever, we want to, of course, throw an error. So we're gonna throw an error. So we're gonna do a return. So when you do a return, basically you don't run the code that comes after, you just stop in here. So return with a callback. Remember that we were using our callbacks before all the time with nulls, like we're not passing any error. This time we're gonna pass a new error. So this is how you can create a new error in JavaScript. And the message for the error is gonna be, please upload an image. Please upload an image with type with, with, type of JPG or PNG. Okay, this is the error that we wanna do. And finally, so if, this is if there is an error. If there is no error, I'm just gonna do a callback with a undefined for the first part. You could put undefined or null, and then I'm just gonna put in here as true. So it means that we can actually upload this and there was nothing wrong. And I think that's it, I think that's it. So obviously, when you send that from the front end to the back end in here, we're gonna go to this URL, we're gonna upload the file, make sure that we go through all of these that we just covered, and then what do we want to do in here inside? First, I'm gonna put this inside of a try-catch block just to see if we got any errors. So, if everything goes fine inside of our try, I wanna do a res.send, so I'm gonna send this onto the front end, and I'm gonna send this with an object, and it's gonna have a message of image, image uploaded, and I'm gonna have a success of true. Okay. Um, if for some reason there's an error, so we're gonna throw, we're gonna throw a new error with this error. Or we could actually probably just send it directly. I'm just put in here, res.send, I'm gonna put in here um, a message with error.message. I think we should be all right. Error.message and success, false. If there is some problem in here, we can always come back and check if everything is all right. Okay, I believe that we created everything that we need in our backend. Um, let's just give it a try now on the front end, of course. 
So let's go to our front end. Let's go to our app.js. In here, when we submitted the form, we sent this on to um, the backend. Let me just see if we are missing anything. Ah, what I want to do in here after this is I want to do a set state. And let me just go in here, const response equals to await and in here on the top, async. Okay, make sure that you put in here this async on the top and this await in here. So what we are doing is an async and await. Basically, we are sending this request onto the backend. We are awaiting for it because this is an asynchronous process. We are storing it in this into this variable called response. We could call it anything that we want. And then I could just go in here and do a console.log of uh, response. So just we can see it in here on the browser and see how does it look like. Let's see if this is working. Okay, let's open our console. Let me just refresh, make sure that we are okay. Uh, am I running? No, I need to run. I need to run both of these projects, guys. Don't forget that. Uh, by the way, this is not going to work yet because my backend on the server.js, we created our route, but we never initialized the server, okay? You need to make sure that you need to put in here app.listen. Okay, so this is going to listen on port 5000. And then... I'm going to put in here a callback function that is simply going to do a console.log server is running on port 5000. Okay, now we need to make sure that our front end and back end they are running. Okay, so ls, I am on my back end at the moment, so I'm going to do npm start on the back end. Now I'm going to open a new terminal and I'm going to do cd client, so I'm going to go inside of my client and I'm going to do npm start. Okay, so I'm starting the front end. So I got two different terminals, one starting the front end, one starting the back end. Okay, let's open my console. I'm going to try to upload an image. By the way, guys, let's look in here. Images, there is nothing in there. Let's see if this works or not. I'm going to go upload this image. Let's select, upload an image. And looks like that this was fine. Look, JavaScript is in here now, the image. Let's see the console.log from our request to the backend. So we got our response. Look, this is what we did, console.log response. We need to go inside of data. And as you guys can see, we got our message and we got success true. Perfect, okay. So instead of just putting this console.log in here, what I want to do is uh, on my front end, I want to do a set state, set state, bring everything that was there from before. And then I want to update the message with my response dot data dot message. And then I also want to put my success to see if it was successful or not. So this is response dot data dot um, success, that's what we have in there. Okay, let's refresh. Let's see if we can see the message. Select the file. This time I'm going to select this digital ocean. I'm going to click upload image. Image uploaded. Perfect. Let's double check in here our backend images. Look, JavaScript, JPEG, digital ocean, JPEG. So we got all our images. One last thing, guys, this is completely optional if you want, is I would like to add maybe some um, progress bar. Whenever you are uploading something, maybe if it's taking too long or whatever, it's always nice to see the progress bar. So this is optional, like I said. Uh, let's go and implement this. So in our app.js, whenever we are doing this kind of uh, Axios uh, request to the backend, we can actually add after this part in here of this content multi-part, I'm going to put a comma, I'm going to put a new object. This is part of Axios itself, guys, okay? So if you want to do on, up, so on up, uh, loads, I think that's so on upload progress. If I'm not wrong, that's it, on upload progress. 
This takes a progress progress event parameter. Okay, and this is a function. And what we're gonna do in here is, every time that this is uploading, this is a function from, like I said, uh, from Axios itself, we can actually store these maybe in a state. Let's go in here on the top, create a new state where we can store these. And let's do uh, const, uh, I'm gonna call this one, my progress, progress bar, and then I'm gonna put set progress bar, use state zero, okay? Um, so down here, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do a set progress bar to be, now here is the thing guys, this progress event only gives you two parameters, gives you the total, so how much it is, like the 100%, and gives you the loaded, how much it has been loaded every second. So we need to do a bit of a calculation in here to make sure that we can see that nice, like from zero, one, two, three, uh, until it's like completely uploaded. So let's do that. Let's do in here set progress bar, and inside I'm gonna do a parse int, just to make sure that we are working with numbers. Then I'm going to use in here a math.round. So this is from the JavaScript library. We are just trying to uh, round the numbers. So we got some nice things in here. We don't have like these kind of decimal places in there. Um, math.round. And what I want to do in here into this math.round is I'm going to do a progress event dot loaded times 100 because this is coming like 1% uh, uh, or whatever. We're gonna convert this into 100% so we can see this. Uh, and then I'm gonna just divide this by progress event dot total. And just like this, we should be able now to actually um, see the percentage of that. So let's go down here to my image container. Let me just see where did I put this. And I'm gonna put this in here. So after my image container in here on the top, okay, I'm gonna create a div with a class of pro progress container, okay? And inside of this, this is where I'm gonna put my actual progress bar. Um, so let's do that. Let's do in here a div. And this needs to be dynamic. So I'm gonna put in here a style. Style equals to, and I'm gonna put in here a width. So I'm putting some inline styles with React. So this is gonna be like this, back tick. So I can use the ternary operator, not ternary operator, the <laughs> template literals. So I want to put the state dot, um, success. So, of course, I only want to display this kind of progress bar if my state success is true, okay? So if I uploaded something correctly. Um, so this, and so this is the state success. If it's true, I wanna see the progress bar, else I just wanna see zero, okay? Um, and this is gonna be for percentage, okay? So we will see the percentage of this. Uh, next thing that I want to do is the height. Height of this is gonna be, for example, 30 pixels. And finally, I'm gonna put in here a background color of light green. I think that looks okay. I think that should be all right. Um, I'm gonna try to break these down so you guys can see a bit better. So I got my width, I got my height, I got my background color. Look, as in here, when you are using inline styling with uh, React, it looks a bit different from regular inline style. So just double check that. I'm using the percentages, of course, because I want the width of these to be a bit different. Now let's set up Let's set up in here some CSS for it. So just to make sure that we got this right. So for that, 
For my progress container, I want to make sure that this container is around, uh, could be 400 pixels. Inline block, margin zero auto, just to be centered on the page, margin top 50 pixels. And finally, there is a div inside of my progress container. This is the actual div with, uh, we want to put transition of all. So all means that if there is a width, height, uh, background color or whatever, any transition that is going to happen is going to take 0.5 seconds is in out. This is just to be smooth. Let's see if I'm missing anything else. Uh, finally, of course, inside of my app.js, inside of this div, look, we created this div, but inside we didn't put anything. So this is where I will actually want to put the numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever, 100%. So for that, I want to make sure that, first of all, that my progress bar is different than zero. So I don't want to show 0% if there is nothing to upload. And I want to make sure that my state dot success is true. Okay. And finally, I can just put in here my progress bar as a percentage. So I'm going to put this in backticks, dollar sign, I'm going to put my progress bar. Okay, and my percentage, because this is just the value that we see in here. Let's refresh, let's choose a file to upload, let's choose, for example, this Node.js, let's click Upload, and nothing is showing. Hmm, strange, let's see what's wrong in here. Um, so we got this, my progress bar. Um, all right, I think I know what's the problem. I think the problem is this one, okay? so. We don't want to have this extra object in here. I think that's what's causing this confusion. So if you just remove that object that I put in there, uh, let's just make sure that we got this correct. We got this one in here. Um, so, okay. Let's double check if this is correct. So we got our upload progress. Ah, there's a couple of things missing in here. First of all, this should be the headers, okay? I forgot to put this part in here, so I got my headers. Okay, let's just close this, okay? So this should be like this. Uh, we got my headers, and look, this is my form data where it closes down here, all right? So let's just make sure that everyone has the same thing like me in here. So this part in here on the top, closes with this one in here. So let's close also these parentheses. So this is the last one. We got our headers. Look, the headers is starting in here and it's closing in here. Then we got our upload progress. We got this one. So this one in here matches with this one in here. Then we got the set progress bar in here. We got our parse int in here. And we got our math round in here. And we got this one. So we should be all good now. If I'm not wrong, let's just refresh. Let's try it. Upload. And it comes as 100%. So this part in here is fine. Now, we are still not seeing what we really want for, um, for this part in here. So let's just double check what's wrong. Oh, I think it's state.success, I missed in here a C. Okay, let's double check. I think this time is gonna be all right. Let's upload, for example, this one, upload, and there it is. As you guys can see, now is coming the um, complete, like, I'm gonna try it again. Wait, let me just double check. I'm gonna try this one, upload an image, and there it is, okay? Let me just refresh, let me just try it, put this kind of image that is too big, upload. Oh, this time we didn't get this message, right. So this is the last thing that we were missing. So let's just go in here into my console and it's gonna be in here. Um, right, okay, so this is the part that I said that was maybe not gonna work. So down here where we got this catch error, let's just grab this, okay? If you remember, I had this throw, throw new error, and the error is gonna be this one. So once you throw an error in here, you actually, after this app.post, put a comma in here, 
and now we can deal with that part. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in here a function, which is going to take the error, which is going to take request, response, and next. Okay, so this is going to be a function. Let's put it in here. And now here is going to be the place where we can actually send the error message with the success of false, if I'm not wrong. So let's just double check now refresh the page, go in here, upload, and there it is. Okay, now we are getting the error successfully on our front end is telling us that the file is too large. Oof, all right guys, I think this was like a long tutorial, but I think it was quite, quite good. If you go in here onto your images, look, you got everything that you uploaded. And that's it really guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy this. I'll put the, the files of these, uh, all, the, um, all the links in the description as well if you wanna get it. Of course, you can just follow along and get them. But that's it guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.